Right, there we go. Recording. Right, we'll kick off with Rob. Just before we do, um, obviously, we've just announced that a member of the support staff has tested positive for COVID-19. Um, that member of the support staff will stay in Canberra. They won't go to Adelaide uh, when the group travel for the uh, beginning of the Ashes series. Um they're obviously you're welcome to ask Heather any questions you like, but there are some elements of it, obviously, which are covered slightly by confidentiality, etc. We have a few more rounds of tests um, that we're waiting on as routine. Um, the, there are two warm up games scheduled to take place this weekend. Um, they are carrying on as they would have anyway. Um, we have pretty stringent medical protocols in place. Um, and they are in place to protect us from this kind of situation. So uh, if someone gets COVID, the, the limit is hopefully spread. Um, so th those matches will carry on on Saturday and Sunday between England women and England women A. Uh, there are some additional protocols in place across those games because of this COVID case. Um, I'm sure you might have some more questions. Obviously, Heather just might not be able to ask all of them. So half a chance I jump in at another point, but hopefully not. Um, Rob, over to you. Thanks very much. Morning, Heather, or, or evening, Heather, because it is out there. Um, let's let's kick off with that COVID case then, if if we can. How much of a concern is it for you that, that one case has got into the camp, knowing, I guess, how quickly it can potentially spread? Well, I guess we're prepared for this. Uh, I think it was pretty naive to think we wouldn't be affected by it. Um, but yeah, there's obviously concern and anxieties um, from the group, but... As Henry just alluded to, we've had to live under pretty strict protocols once we've arrived. Um, we've only been allowed to socialise outdoors for exactly this reason, to try and limit the spread. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a nervous 24, 48 hours, but um, the PCR tests we've done already have, have all come back negative. So, fingers crossed. Um, and look, it, it was always going to be affected by COVID. We've already been affected by COVID in our preparations. We've had to to safe live for two weeks in the UK um, from Christmas pretty much just in order to get out here. And it's, it's been a colossal effort from the players, from the staff and, and from all the, the households of every single player as well. Cause, cause obviously how prevalent Omicron variant has been in the UK, it's been um, very tricky and, and challenging to just get everyone out here. Um, so there you go. It's the first chance we've had to speak to you since the series was moved forward. I just wonder how much that's affected your preparations. Yeah, look, it's not been ideal. Um, that's for sure. I think the lead up for a number of reasons has, has been pretty average, to be honest. Obviously, it's all out of our control. So for those two weeks before we left England, we could only train as individuals and with our household. So we've got mums feeding bowling machines, boyfriend slinging, girlfriend slinging. Uh, dads batting um, and any family members or households supporting our training so uh, it's, as you can imagine it's been pretty comical but also not ideal preparation for, for a series of this magnitude but it's been completely unavoidable for us to do that just to get everyone on the plane out here has been been tough um, and obviously yeah we, we found out that with that quarantine in New Zealand that our preparation is going to be a little bit shorter so um, sort of getting our heads around that and, and trying to find ways to, to get our, ourselves ready physically, mentally um, has, has been a little bit harder. And then obviously you throw COVID in there and shifting goalposts from the World Cup a little bit as well. As you can imagine, it's been quite hard to focus on the cricket at the moment. And it didn't help that the first training session, it, um, it rained cats and dogs. So that was, um, yeah, a little bit amusing. But look, we haven't had the best preparation, but what we've got to do is, is try and make the, the most of it. We're absolutely going to do that it's, it's out of our control what has happened in in the build-up and for us as players we've just got ourselves got to get ourselves ready as mentally as we can and, and just find a way to bring the team together almost obviously um more metaphorically than literally with with covid bringing people together but um yeah i'm, I'm confident that we'll make the most of, of what's been a bad situation You've spoken about it there being fed by boyfriends or family members and you've done it with a smile on your face, but there must be a, a certain element of frustration that you're going into this massive series trying to win the Ashes for the first time in eight years and as a captain, you know full well that your team's undercooked. Yeah, of course, there's a, a frustration there, but it's the times we're living at the moment, it's very challenging 
to tour with with COVID around at the moment and the restrictions we've been under have, have changed as well. So just being adaptable to that as a player has been been quite tricky because as soon as you get your head around something, something else changes. But um, like I said, we've got no other option but to try and make the most of it and and do the best we can and, and almost maybe it'll take the pressure off. We've got to find a way to free up, go out there and, and almost um, just throw caution to the wind a little bit and, and see what we can do. Um, mentally, it's going to be tough, but we're doing everything we can to, to try and get ourselves prepped and, and be ready for that first game. Just a final question then, so slightly away from the cricket, but from the perspective of an elite athlete that's out in Australia at the moment, you've talked about restrictions. <clears throat> We've seen everything that's gone on with, with Novak Djokovic. I don't expect you to talk about the intricacies of his case particularly, but have you been clear since the, the process of, of going to an Ashes of exactly what you needed to do as a sports person to be able to go to Australia and play and operate as best as possible? 100%. Um, as soon as we realised that a, a booster was something we would have to do and wanted to do to, to protect ourselves and protect other people, uh, pretty much straight away, the, the squad booked themselves in. We got back from Oman and I think most people booked to get their booster that that week and um, our doctor said he's never seen a team so committed to, to getting that done so proud of the girls that, that that was the case and we knew it would be a something that we have to do and something we wanted to do as well even if we weren't going on a cricket tour to, to be able to come out here all right thanks Heather thanks Rob, thanks, Rob. Sonia please hi Heather um <clears throat> I, I was speaking to Catherine the other day and she said you've been so lucky so far in the whole sort of two years pandemic you haven't had any positive cases in the playing squad is it just a case of inevitability that one was going to happen on this tour uh well I think the fact that the new variant is so contagious you're seeing how it's affecting sport in the UK in particular and, and now over here in Australia so um look, look I think we've been so amazing as a group of players the girls have sacrificed so much the the girls families partners friends have sacrificed a lot as well to to enable us to continue doing that and we've got brilliant medical staff as well that have have set up things that can try and enable us to to have more freedom but also to to obviously try and avoid covid and um we've adhered by pretty much every rule you can imagine and um i think this one was super unlucky so that was probably inevitable that it was going to happen at some point so um yeah hopefully we've managed to limit the damage a little bit and, and we can crack on with the series and um, moving on to sort of your tournament prep which obviously has been dented by the t20s being shifted before how much of a disadvantage is that considering australia have had a whole summer and a women's big bash and they're now going into this and you guys sort of haven't played outdoor cricket since the new zealand series in september really yeah, potentially. Um, we obviously managed to get that trip to Oman, which is a really good trip for us outdoors. Um, slightly different to conditions to, to what we're going to face, but I guess the Aussies have had slightly disrupted build up as well with the WNCL and, and things like that getting cancelled. So, um, yeah, look, it's, it's not ideal, but often when you go on overseas tours, you, you haven't played outdoor cricket for a while and, and you have to get up to speed very quickly. Um, and I, I guess the, the T20s being first potentially might help us. I think it's a one of our strongest formats, one we've we've been very successful in. So, and hopefully it's a format that we can go out and, and just try and express ourselves and, and just enjoy playing cricket and, and put the rest of the stuff um, hopefully to to one side and, and just try and be ready for that. And have you been picking the brains of those who only got a couple of players in the squad who played in the big bash? Have you been picking their brains trying to find out any batters' weaknesses? Well, we haven't been able to spend too much time together at the moment. So, um, yeah, not too much. But, um, yeah, of course, it's a team that we've played a lot against. Um, a lot of the girls have played in the Big Bash teams over the years with and against a lot of the Australian players. And and obviously, we've been doing our homework on, on what's gone on in the WBBL because it's, it's been the, the first year for a long time that um, not a huge amount of players from particularly the main squad have played in it at all. But, um, yeah, it was really nice for those girls to have a bit of experience, obviously, um, the Bouche, my Boucher and, and Charlie Dean um, getting a bit of experience in Australian conditions um, will be will be key for them to, to try and be ready. And finally, for me, it's the first time you've taken an A squad. How important is that, especially given that your preparation time has been limited? Yeah, it's been it's been great. Uh, I think 
it's a, a really good step that we've been able to do that and it assures that if the weather doesn't intervene which which hopefully it won't um that we're going to have some good warm-up games which is really good and one opportunity for those guys as well to play against the full England team and have an opportunity to to tour in in a great place like Australia and and show what they can do and, and try and push their push their case forward um so yeah it's, it's brilliant um that we've got them here and it's it's meant it's, it's been slightly strange we've, we've had so many people around which has, has been quite quite different actually um there's a lot of partners and families here as well which is is lovely so we've got quite a, a big group to look after which is is quite nice as well thank you Heather. thanks on you thanks on you raf please hi heather um can you talk a bit about what day-to-day -day life looks like out there for you at the moment kind of in between training sessions and the matches and um, what restrictions are there in place for the for the team so the restrictions actually changed overnight uh, whilst we were on the on the flight so one thing we were expecting uh changed slightly when we arrived um so at the moment we're not allowed to to go for dinner anywhere even outdoors um we're hopeful that that will change because that's going to be quite a, a tough thing to do for so long and obviously we've got a quarantine in New Zealand coming up as well which looks like it's going to be a hard quarantine for 10 days if we don't get get that exemption which we're still hopeful we will um but yeah we're, we're only allowed to to socialize outdoors um try and distance as much as we can um we're allowed to get takeaway coffees and takeaway food and stuff like that so yeah it's um restrictions that are in place to to try and obviously protect the integrity of the series but we also need to make sure that we look after players and, and staff and, and everyone who's out here as well because we've also we've been living pretty much um isolated in our households since Christmas and, and a little bit before as well. So obviously it's it's not the the start of the tour for us and the start of those restrictions. It's it's been the case for a while now. So we we need to find that balance between yeah, trying to keep the integrity of the series and, and try and stay as safe as as possible, but also um have a, having feeling like you're having a little bit of freedom like you can can live within the restrictions with a tiny bit of freedom which I think mentally is quite important thanks and um how much do you feel a kind of personal pressure or, or responsibility as captain um just in the sense of obviously um the ashes followed by the world cup is is quite an intense um couple of of series and, and tournament um, for you and we've seen that with the men um, the pressure and the spotlight really falls on on the captain when things go badly so so how much kind of personal pressure do you feel and will you be feeling over the next few weeks do you think I think you always feel a sense of responsibility as captain you want to lead from the front and be successful and help the team win games of cricket um, but I think I've had quite a lot of experience of, of doing that, hopefully, and, and hopefully it's um, pressure that I've managed pretty well in the past and, and I won't be changing too much in, in how I approach things and, and how I do things just because it's it's an Ashes in a World Cup. I want to be as consistent as I possibly can in, in who I am as a person, how I prepare, how I chat to the girls and, um, yeah, I won't be changing that too much and try and keep it as, as normal as possible and, Hopefully um, I can come have some success out here. I think it's a place where I, I really enjoy playing. I, I love batting on Australian wickets and, and I think I've had a bit of success out here as well. So, yeah, hopefully um, I can start the series well and, and have a bit of success. And happy memories for you in particular of Canberra, I guess, where, where the test is being played. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's nice to come back. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a quieter town, so probably the anxiety around COVID is is a little bit um, reduced when you're walking down the streets because not many people around. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a place I've enjoyed playing and had a lot of success. Got some very happy memories here. Um, can't believe it was two years ago that we were last here. Actually, it feels like a lot less than that. And also it's been a, an interesting two years, not not the two years we, we thought we would have uh, in between coming back here. But um, yeah, I'm excited to get going. We're playing at the Adelaide Oval as well, which is another place, uh, one of my favourite grounds in Australia. Um, yeah, and we're lucky that we, we get to play at these amazing grounds and, and go to these amazing places. Cool. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Raf. Gomesh, please. Hi, Heather. Good evening. Uh, one of the features that we saw throughout the England summer, summer was that the rotation of fast bowlers through the India as well as the New Zealand series. Uh, with the 
schedule being revised right now with tests following the ODIs. How does it really affect the way you have already planned, uh, especially with respect to uh, the likes of Brunt and uh, Shrubsol? Because we saw them being rotated during the New Zealand series. Now the tests, ODIs and the World Cup to follow. How do you look at, uh, has it affected your initial planning and uh, how crucial is it for you in the lead up to the World Cup? Yeah, well, it's quite hard to plan at the moment. This, the schedule obviously only changed a couple of weeks ago and um, it, it is intense. There's no point um, trying to hide behind that. You've got the T20s, you've got three days before a test match and obviously previously we thought the test match was going to be first and, and we would have had a really good build up to that and that's obviously changed now and our focus has, has to be those T20s and, and trying to get ready for that. Obviously, um, there's challenges with, with changing the formats. You need to get the bowlers getting overs in um, to try and be ready for the test match. So that might mean during the T20s, um, preparation for certain players might be slightly different or they might have to bowl a little bit more than they potentially normally would during a T20 series. Um, but look, it, it's an Ashes series and, and a World Cup. It, I, as, as captain, I want my best team as much as possible. But being realistic with certain players, we might have to fiddle it a little bit um, and, and look at, potentially where they might be able to get a little bit of, of breathing space and, and where they're at with their body. But look, we, we've planned a little bit, but but not too much. We, we have to be flexible um, with what's going on at the moment and um, we'll try to get the best team that we possibly can and, and the team that we think uh, will be successful and, and give us the best chance um, going into that. But you're right, the schedule is very intense, um, but we've also prepared for that. And I think a lot of the rotation in the summer was to try and create a squad where players have experience and, and if they are needed, whether it's injury or, or we feel like someone needs a game off that those players can come in. Um, so yeah, we've, we've had a little bit of planning for this sort of scenario. Um, but yeah, we're, we're hopeful that um, we can have the best side as much as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Gomesh. Akash, please. Hello, Edith. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, the heading into this series, uh, you guys have also played a test match in the last uh, six, seven months. So how does that uh, get you prepared for this series? Yeah, it, it helps massively. Um, it gives you a chance as a player to, to get your head around how you're going to go about things um, more mentally than anything. And, and I think we spoke about that a lot as a group, how mentally we're going to approach it. I think the amount of white ball cricket we do play particularly as batters, your, your instinct is to, to score. And um, I think being comfortable with, with soaking up pressure and, and potentially not scoring for a little bit in a test match is when you, when you do have to do that, uh, I think mentally is quite a hard skill to get around, but it's something um, that we've spoken about and um, also not going too, too far in your shell as well, because you, you want to, um, well, your job as a batter is to go and score runs. But I think that test match we had against India was a really good test match. Um, it set up the players really nicely for, for what we got to come because um, we don't get to play them too often, as, as you obviously know. Thanks, Akash. Harry, sorry, I didn't mean to skip you out. No problem. Um, just a couple of questions from me. Um, first off, just on the mindset going into both of these competitions with the difficult preparations that you're having to do and having to make do with what you're given, essentially, um, how do you try and keep that preparation side of it off your mind and not go into games thinking, well, I've maybe not played so well because I haven't actually had the preparation where really you're going in it to win it regardless of what your preparations are? Yeah, of course, we, we've got to make the best of it and give it our best shot. And there's no doubt we'll do that, even though the preparation won't have been ideal. And um, I think it's more how we approach it mentally and um, if we use that as an excuse um, and become super negative about it, um, that's not going to be healthy for us. So I think mainly the strategy we found is is to make jokes and, and try and laugh about it at the moment, to be honest, and and just try and keep everyone as, as relaxed as possible and um, try and find this, the funny side of it because um, that definitely helps in, in terms of getting your head around it. And we, we've we got to keep um, tight as a group. We've got to keep spirits high and... Um, just, just find a way, really. Uh, it's easier said than done, but that's our jobs. Um, we've been dealt the hand we've been given and um, hopefully we can can sneak in the cards and, and play a blinder and um, be successful. 
And just finally, on a sort of more newsy point, but today um, we would have we will have seen the report from MPs um, off the back of Azim Rafiq giving his evidence towards the end of last year, which I'm sure you would have seen and been across. Um, of course, you would have been around and overseen when Sophia Dunkley became the first black English women test cricketer, um, which was a great moment. Um, do you welcome more needing to be done in the future? And actually, could it improve the professional game if the pool has been opened wider to more people? Yeah, of, of course, it's it's going to improve it. The more welcoming cricket can be in, in terms of race, gender, whatever it might be, is, is only going to be a massive positive. And um, the women's game is no different. It's not as diverse as it should be. Um, and that's the fact of the matter. The, the Sophia being the first black woman to play for England in, in 2021 should have happened a lot earlier. Um, and obviously there's a lot of reasons why, why that has happened um, and why it's, it's been hard for certain players to, to find routes to, to play for England. And I think because women's cricket has faced barriers of its own, you've got that on top of other things which are, are in the sport. So um, yeah, look, it's, we want things to change and uh, we as players want to be a part of that as well. And, um Sophia's handled it so brilliantly she she um obviously gets asked a lot about it and she takes it in her stride and is a great role model for for people and, and representations is so important and um she's a huge part of our side hugely popular player um and she deals with that pressure of 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 I guess being the first in something amazingly well and um our job as well is to support her in that in that and, and ensure that pressure I guess doesn't doesn't become too much and, and she's able to to be herself and and um be successful and perform but um yeah look this I think it's ultimately going to be a good thing all all the stuff that's gone on it's obviously been pretty uncomfortable and, and I'm unpleasant but I think it's something that hopefully will will lead to to something good which um we all want to see thank you